I mean, you can't see, but it's a direct drop off down that way, so. A Link to the Past was the first game I ever played. Not the first Zelda game, but the first game in general. Sonic the Hedgehog was a close second, and I'm honestly really glad I dodged that bullet, because who knows what kind of person I would have grown up to be if my tiny little brain had latched on to Sonic the same way it had Zelda. I immediately fell in love with the Zelda series. It, it made a lot of sense to me, right? You have a high fantasy world with puzzles and beautiful music and a compelling but simple story. It had all the right ingredients to sate my lust for color from moving pixels. As time moved forward, I explored and played the other games that had Zelda on the cover, and I started to subconsciously pick up on a formula. You know, things that connected each installment in the series that made it feel like it was all a person's vision for how a Zelda game should be. Broken down to its most simple parts, we had a Metroidvania style open world to explore, linear puzzle based dungeons and temples that require a specific item for traversal, a sense of progression by obtaining hearts through beating bosses and finding heart pieces around the open world, and a story that serves to motivate our actions and progress along every step. There are other aspects of the formula such as obtaining the Master Sword or collecting items to defeat the big baddie whether it be pieces of the Triforce, or recruiting giants to keep the moon from falling. But those aspects are a little bit more freestyle throughout the series. With all of these being the blocks of the formula that have seemingly built up over the last 35 years, it's strange to see how Nintendo would completely deviate from this formula and throw out nearly every aspect of it. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, while good games in their own right, have nearly none of the aforementioned gameplay elements that have been infused into the Zelda formula. Look, there's still data in there. It's not clipped. Shut up, Sony. You're not my dad. Okay. I think it's actually less embarrassing to tell people that I'm taking a poop over here than it is to tell them that I am filming a video essay about Zelda. As soon as you leave the plateau in Breath of the Wild, you're met with a huge open world with endless places to go. If you can see it, you can go there. That's fun and all, but it's not really Zelda. Okay, I'm getting down, this is too much. Once you've explored something one time, there's really not a good reason to go back unless it's a village or a place with an abundant amount of NPCs. This means that areas are really only ever good for one go around. In the world of a traditional Zelda, you might find walls that need to be blown up with bombs you haven't found yet, or rocks that are so big that you need a fairy's blessing to lift them out of the way, or an item just on a perch high enough that you need a hook shot to get to. These are things that encourage the player to go back, to think about what they're seeing while they're exploring. It gives a certain sense of progression. This is something that is largely missing from the open world in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. In those games, there's very few places that you can't reach immediately after the tutorial area. You want to climb a rock that's too high for your current stamina bar? Just cook a meal that refills your stamina bar. You want to fight an enemy that's too powerful for your current level? You just cook a hundred meals and eat them every time you get hit. You can always punch above your weight and you can always climb above your stamina. In any Zelda game that follows the traditional formula, you explore the world, you find a dungeon, the dungeon is linear, you get an item to complete the dungeon, use that item to beat the boss, and the boss gives you a heart container. You get a well-contained, puzzle-filled experience, a new way to interact with the world through the use of a new item, and an increase to your health through getting a heart container from the boss. All of this contained in one nice package. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom do technically have dungeons. They're there if you want. All the dungeons across both of the games are completely optional. If you wish, you could just walk to the final boss after the tutorial area in both games. The actual dungeons themselves are so lackluster. In both games, Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, the fact that you can walk into any dungeon at any time in any order you'd like means that every puzzle across both games can be solved with one of the few basic abilities that you're handed in the tutorial area. The areas around these dungeons in both games, really interesting. But the fact that the dungeons themselves had to be dumbed down to be solved in any order just ruins it. Every step you take in a traditional Zelda is motivated by your quest to stop the big baddie. The big shoddy. You know, most areas have their own ways of keeping you around. Everybody's got issues. Everybody's got a little little thing they need help with. 
but your reason for exploring each area is almost always motivated by a higher purpose. These small pieces build up to make you feel like you're part of the story. Like these tasks that you're completing really do have a larger impact on the world that you're exploring and progressing through. Dude, somebody died in the mountains and there's a cop fucking ready to arrest their corpse. Holy crap. That AMB lamb is really cramming. In the Switch Zelda games, all four corners of the world that you go to explore feel so disconnected from the larger purpose. Sure, Ganon bullied them around and made their lives kind of stinky, but with their areas being completely optional, I don't really feel a crazy incentive to go there on subsequent playthroughs. Your overall reward for going to these four areas and helping all these people and finishing the dungeon is you get a sliver of health taken off of the final boss so it dies faster. And the story in Zelda games has always been linear, which makes it easier for the developers to flesh it out. It's much harder to make the story impactful when you can pick up the beats at any time in any order. As much as people love having choices and options, Oftentimes, the best way to tell a story is to just tell it. Games like the Souls series have interesting stories and fun lore, but the thing about it is that you have to piece it together yourself. It's the community that builds these stories into what they truly are. And while that is cool, that is interesting, it's not Zelda. You know, I can say all this stuff, but at the end of the day, it's just items. We need items. Items are a staple of the Zelda series. And to take that away from us, is to just poop in our face and put just poop on it. Anyways, despite what I've said, I actually do love these games. Uh, they're some of my favorite games ever made. They're just not Zelda games. Uh, and if you ever want to see me play these games, I have a Twitch channel, Twitch TV forward slash Maxos. I stream like semi regularly. Fuck! It's a good time. You should check it out. Uh, and thank you for sticking with me. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Oh, baby!